Your desire to attract prosperity represents a highly spiritual request. It's perfectly attuned to the law of abundance from which you originated. Your imbalances are energies in the form of thoughts that you mistakenly believe will bring about the desired prosperity. Following are seven of the most common thoughts that make the manifestation of prosperity virtually impossible. Number one, it's not God's will. By blaming God for not having what you need or desire, you justify a built-in excuse for accepting your lot in life. In reality, as St. Paul reminds us, God is more than willing to provide you with the blessings of abundance. In fact, God is pure abundance, but you're the one out of balance on the prosperity scale. By putting the responsibility for your shortages on divine will, you create enormous resistance energetically. You're asking the universe to send you more of what you believe in. The solution to removing this barrier, which applies to all seven of these resistance energies, is changing the belief. By first catching yourself in the midst of a fallacious thought and replacing that thought with something like, I am a creation of God. God is abundant. I must be what I came from. Being like what I came from means that God wants me to enjoy the fullness of prosperity. This is how I'm going to express life from now on. 2. There's a limited supply. This thought represents enormous resistance to a restoration of balance on the prosperity scarcity scale. Thoughts such as there's only so much to go around and everyone can't be wealthy. Once again, the solution for removing this kind of resistance is to purge it and replace these thoughts with new energies that match up more harmoniously with the truth of the world that you live in. Try thinking of money in the context of the ocean. There's an infinite supply, more than enough to take care of your needs. The supply of money circulating around this globe isn't diminished no matter how much you take for yourself. Why? Because ultimately, money, like ocean water, has to return to its source. It just keeps circulating as energy. Take a million gallons from the ocean, and it still remains the same. Here's how it works. Abundance is scooped from abundance, and abundance remains. 3. I don't deserve it. Here's a simple rule of thumb. When you believe that you're worthy of prosperity flowing into your life, then you'll attract precisely what you do believe. If you believe that attracting money into your life is in some way inconsistent with a spiritual consciousness, then you erect barriers of resistance to stop this flow. And the universe, being what it is, it submits back to you precisely what you believe about being undeserving. To change this idea and rebalance yourself on this scale, you need to realign your desire with the energy of your thinking. You need to keep reminding yourself that you are a divine piece of God. Feeling as if you're unworthy of God's abundance is the same as denying your spiritual essence and insulting your Creator as well. Remember that you came here to be just like a God, but you broke away from that idea when you believed more in your separation than in your unity with your Source. Silently repeat something similar to, I am a piece of God, a divine, individualized expression of God. I am worthy and deserving of all that God is and all that flows into my life. The abundance I desire is on its way, and I will do everything I can to avoid blocking and resisting this divinely inspired flow. And four, I have limited abilities and talents. If you hold a belief in your mind that you don't possess the ability or talent to attract abundance, then you've weighted your balance scale with a lifetime supply of scarcity. This is a huge symptom of resistance masquerading as an excuse for why you're coming up short on the prosperity balance beam. Your inner vision will trump your innate talent every time. In fact, if you have the confidence that the skills or abilities you need are readily available, then you're on your way. Number one, banish the excuse of no talent. And number two, create an inner picture of attracting prosperity. And number three, act as if by being what you desire. Act as if by being what you desire. You're as talented as you've decided to be up until now. Change the picture, and miracle of miracles, you change your talent as well. Number five, I've never been lucky. The universe that you live in, and that lives in you, operates on energy and energy alone. Nothing happens until something moves, said Albert Einstein. Everything is vibrating, even what seems to be motionless. Your universe functions with the law of attraction, meaning that energy matches up with similar energy. Your thoughts are vibrations of energy. Low thoughts, those that are out of balance with source energy, attract low energy responses from the universe. High, 
Spiritually based thoughts activate identical vibrations that bring you what you desire in harmony with your source. That being said, there's no room for luck in the universe. If you have an accident, you aren't unlucky and you're not at fault. You're simply a vibrational match to whatever you collided with in that moment. By viewing your world in this way, you can begin to exercise more choice about what you're matching up with. By changing the lower vibrational energy of your thoughts to higher vibrations, you set into motion energy that seeks to match your higher desires. 6. It's always been this way. When you use your personal history to justify why you're presently out of balance on the abundance scale, you're really saying, I have a long history of attracting scarcity into my life, and I intend to continue doing precisely the same thing. Thinking that the past is responsible for your continuing insufficiency is a major source of resistance. You've probably been taught that if you don't pay attention to the mistakes of the past, you're bound to repeat them. Here's my take on that advice. Keeping your thoughts on the mistakes of the past guarantees that you'll continue manifesting them in the present. I think you're better off tossing out your personal history or any deficiencies that have surfaced in your life. Refuse to think about what's failed to materialize unless you're hoping for more of the same. Avoid talking about your bleak past. Don't identify yourself as someone whose childhood or early adulthood was characterized by dearth and paucity. Instead, look upon your entire history as a series of steps you absolutely needed to take in order to bring you to the present realization of your endless potential for abundance. Be grateful for all that failed to show up. Then shift from resistance to the direction of manifesting your desires and rebalance your thinking so that it matches up with those desires. And seven, I don't know how to think abundance for myself. When you're convinced that prosperity consciousness is akin to a foreign language, once again, you've opted to resist rather than allow. You may not believe that you have the capacity to think in the ways that I've elaborated here in this chapter, but I assure you that you do in spades. It is you, and you are it. Your belief that you can't think in these ways exists only because you've allowed yourself to believe in your separation from your source. 